Charlotte Fazekas. My set, my, my... Just to have a small joke with it, uh, if you translate, my family name is Potter, so I'm Agnes Potter. <laughs> I'm relative of Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm coming from Hungary, from Budapest, which is the capital. I'm studying at the Ötvös Laurent University of Budapest, and I'm doing currently my PhD research. I'm holding a master degree on social policy and also a bachelor degree in sociology. And recently, I mean, basically, my research is on higher education and persons with disabilities. And uh, before. Um, I get started, I want to give you a brief uh, overview what is the structure, because I'm coming from all over <laughs> Hungary, I want to give you a brief introduction what is the Hungarian situation, so you have also a, a brief understanding of the higher education um, uh, landscape of Hungary, and also the background of my research, how I came to the point that I want to do this specific research, what are the policies around it, and what is also my challenges and my, my issues around my, my research. So, uh, in order to start, um, I brought uh, to you um, a graphic on the proportion of persons with disabilities in Hungary. It is the national census was uh, taken in 2011. And of course, it is a voluntary question within our national census. So it's people um, uh, disclosing their disability and it's a voluntary question. So if you don't want to disclose, it's also up to, up to you. So according to the statistics, we have 9.9 uh, .9 million people. All, I mean, this is the total population of Hungary. And uh, uh, within uh, this 4.6% uh, 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 of the people said that uh, they consider themselves with a, with a disability. And uh, as well, um, um, it is, of course, there are many, many different researches and different statistics, but kind of this is the official one. <coughs> So the next slide is uh, a picture about uh, the country, about Hungary, and we have uh, 70 uh, higher education institutions. Um, so it, we are a small country, but still we have 70 individual higher education institutions. Usually they are, uh, like there are state funded or, or, or public uh, universities, there are also private universities and also um, church uh, maintained universities as well. So, in order to keep everything uh, very uh, comprehensive, I brought to you a, 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 a slide with all the, the main characteristics of the past and the current time so that you have a brief understanding what is going on. So, um, and the, the regime was in the past, uh, after the Second World War, um, um, socialism or state socialism. We were part of the East Bloc and we were, uh, we were um, um, uh, part of the, the, the Soviet Union. So, the regime after the 90s was uh, the transition from socialism to democracy. Approach to disability before the 90s were a very strong um, medical model, and also the issues around, uh, issues around uh, disability was always a taboo. People didn't want to talk about it, and also many people, and still, unfortunately, many people live in institutions. So the approach after the 90s became the social model. We also uh, step by step uh, followed our legislation according to that and the and implementations. And also we started like basically from scratch the legislation after the 90s uh, to establish the disability rights uh, legislation. And then uh, around policies on education and disability <coughs> Uh, there are definitely uh, a lot of things to do because also I can also describe that we are like 20 years behind you <laughs> or behind Western European countries. 
So many things uh, are needed in order to implement those policy uh, papers what, are, what have been written in the, uh, in, on paper. So we need a lot of guidelines and uh, guidance in order to put the, medical, uh, the social model into practice. And um, before the, the, the 90s, unfortunately, many uh, kids were in special schools or, and also not uh, access, uh, didn't access to the third level education. And around services and uh, support uh, and training, I'm so happy that I could, during these two weeks I've been here, uh, hear about all the amazing support systems uh, you have in higher education, but unfortunately we have still a lot of issues around how to organize the support. There are not so clear uh, 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 like workload or not clear decided how it is structured and also on the concept on universal design or I can also make it easier like to make the curriculum more inclusive for a diverse range of people it's absolutely a new concept for us uh, I know that also in UK there is a lot of uh, uh, research and um, uh, uh, on, on inclusive, on improving inclusive design in, in curriculum, but for us it's a super new thing. Uh, access and inclusion in the higher education agenda, I mean in a strategy way. So, in a mean that when a higher education institution set up the, the system, uh, this, this uh, specific agenda is not as high as in, in other countries or as in uh, UK. Um, what are the support? Uh, some it's unbalanced. Some support is some universities have a very good support system. Some of them not. And also uh, we have a different um, uh, different financial uh, background. We have a so-called uh, state uh, or uh, institutional incentive, which means that the government uh, gives uh, money. Uh, to the higher education institutions according to the number of the enrolled uh, students with disabilities. So it's not a personal budget, it's an institutional budget. Advocacy and lobbying, I'm also aware that uh, in UK in the past you had the skill uh, organization who was focusing on higher education and access. Also in some other countries like Ireland, there is also an expertise center or, a, or, a, or another, like a, an NGO, who is working on specifically on this topic, but uh, we don't have such a body. And according to the finances, we don't have your tuition fees. So also for the general student population, the whole atmosphere is much more different in order to, to um, the higher education because um, uh, we, we have like the public and free universities. If uh, in case, I mean, it's always the case if you, if you reach the limit to uh, access to the higher education or the study program you are in and in some uh, programs there are also uh, finances. Uh, for example, uh, also some, like I'm on scholarship for my PhD, but some of the PhD students pay tuition fees. Affirmative actions. I know that also in UK and Ireland there is a, a very specific and really nicely uh, organized affirmative actions or alternative access routes. Usually we have, uh, besides your high school uh, points, but you, you you have your marks and your final high school exam. We turn uh, into points uh, these these marks, and the students with disabilities have ex uh, extra points. So this is a uh, a graph about the student population. Um, I brought uh, the academic years from 2002 and the academic year 2011. What is basically a big thing that uh, we our student population is very low it's only zero I mean in 2010-11 academic year it was only 0.60% uh, basically less than 1% of the total st uh, student population is with students with disabilities of course we don't know that how many are more in higher education because it's also the issue around uh, disclosure and data protection and also confidentiality. So there is also a big question mark. And I brought you um, a, a, a picture 
uh, saying diversity is the new normal and uh, various candies are displayed on the screen and the OECD report, report is also here states that, um, that uh, uh, higher education institutions are um, um, coming to a, to, a, to a new era when, when the total student, student population is much more diverse. So, uh, the background of, the, of my research, how it started, we all know that the, chain, the higher education field is changing and also the role is changing across Europe and worldwide. It also says the OECD report and also the UNESCO uh, higher education report. And also that we face as a total student population that uh, there is a massification of uh, the student population. So it's uh, a transition from the elite to the, to the mass and also the diversity of uh, students including um, um, not only disability but other backgrounds as well. And the question is always that if we are widening participation and if we are signing up for, for more inclusive universities, how we can keep this, um, this excellence or the high quality of universities. And uh, there is an organization called the European Access Network, uh, AIN, and then they, one of their uh, colleagues were talking about inclusive excellence, which couldn't be a, also a new uh, interesting way of approaching how we can still uh, like keep balance on between these. What are the Hungarian situation? We also increased student population, like the total student population that increased in the uh, ten in the last um, uh, twenty years after the after the political change, and we also experienced that. However, the student participation became much more diverse and much more bigger. Uh, higher, uh, students with disabilities are still highly underrepresented. And uh, what is basically the last, la last point in my presentation here is that on my, on my slide, that more discriminative cases detected. It means that the student also experienced more uh, discriminative uh, elements when they were ad admitted or when they were uh, accessing higher education uh, when, uh, and also during their completing their studies and also when they are having the access, exit, sorry, exit uh, requirements. So, according to, to the background, I just want to recap again what is our national and probably the European context because we are a small country, we also need to take very much everything into the European context as well. It's just a recap that um, the, it, it, we call it unfortunately like uneducatable children before the political change, but then we changed and then uh, the e uh, Equal Rights on Persons with Disabilities Act was established in 1998. And also we joined the European Higher Education Scheme, the whole Bologna Treaty, uh, uh, and also we had much more detailed uh, mm, regulations on access and inclusion to higher education for persons with disabilities, including the General Equal Treatment Act, which is also covers all kinds of programs as well. We also call uh, uh, students with disabilities as a terminology of prospective or current students. We also not including, yes, thank you, not including, um, um, not including uh, chronic illnesses. And we also uh, ratif signed and ratified the UNCRPD. And also what is important to the social dimension, that uh, the social dimension of the Bologna system has been um, much more taken into account to look on, on the underrepresented groups. So the research is, uh, is that we have these alternative access routes, um, uh, what we also research, but what is missing? Missing is the educational teaching environment, and also we have no such a structured data collection on the student population and also on what, who is studying uh, in which study field. Uh, the ongoing debates are that our certain um, uh, uh, fields uh, are, are um, 
like um, um, difficult to, to, to access like uh, teacher training, engineering or medicine or nursing and also as I mentioned before the different elements like discriminative elements at the, the, uh, at the admission, at the completion and the exit time as well and how it all comes together with the UNCR the <coughs> article 24 which is the right to education and just one example um, before I will finally close um, the safety and health issues for example if a deaf student wants to study um, like uh, biology uh, then then it's it's, it's, I mean, he is going to the lab, the, the laboratory, which is good, but it's also for safety reasons, it also needs to take, make sure that yeah, the, all the chemicals are not affecting the, his ears. Okay, and this will be my last um, uh, um, uh, slide. Uh, basically, um, what I face that there are many discriminative elements uh, in those three parts of the higher education uh, route. Uh, I was, and basically, I wanted to change from the perspective from the individual lens to the institution. So, does higher education has a disability? And um, also, this uh, this will help. I mean, this research will help fill the research gap which we currently face. That many uh, many uh, cases are ended up at court, but mm, the higher education uh, institutions are not ready to to solve the problems uh, because they have no such an experience as well. And I hope that it will be relevant for um, higher education professionals and also, um, also policy makers. And I uh, listed a few things. I want to definitely see the attitudes of the higher education professionals. I also want to do some interviews with different bodies, including the validation committee who are validating all study programs and uh, also uh, surveys about the teaching and learning elements. And this is the last one uh, that um, I also, uh, according to my research, I also uh, saw uh, that we are at the level when there is few or sm small support. Then also I, I experienced that in other universities have a lot of reasonable accommodation and the future is the inclusive curriculum and the universal design. So thank you so much.